Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 7 of the chapter Equilibrium. In part 6, I told you about equilibrium constant and the law of chemical equilibrium. In this video, I'm going to tell you about homogeneous equilibria. We have studied about mixtures, different kinds of mixtures, homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. A homogeneous mixture is one where all the components of the mixture, they kind of mix so nicely that you cannot tell which one is which. It's a perfect blend of the components. And a heterogeneous mixture is one where you can see the components separately and you can actually tell, for example, if you have uh, pebbles and rice, you can tell that these are the pebbles and these, this is the rice. So a homogeneous and a heterogeneous mixture is something that you've already studied in lower classes. It is the same concept which is applied to equilibrium. A homogeneous equilibrium would be one where all the reactants and the products make a homogeneous mixture because we call it, what is the equilibrium mixture? We call it a, an equilibrium mixture. So the, a homogeneous equilibrium would be one where the equilibrium mixture is actually homogeneous, which means all the reactants and the products, when, when they are in the same phase, in the same physical state, we get a homogeneous equilibrium. And preferably that physical state should be the gaseous or the liquid, because in the case of solids, you may be able to tell which one is which. Not always, but you may be able to tell. And mostly the gaseous and the liquid forms. In the gaseous and the liquid forms, you may get that perfect blend. Examples of homogeneous equilibria would be those, react, uh, those reactions in which the reactants and the products are in the same physical state or in the same phase. Example is here, nitrogen combines with hydrogen in Haber's process to give you ammonia. The reactants and the products are all gaseous. Here you have CH3, CO, C2H5, aqueous with water, which is a liquid, again, the liquid state. CH3, COH, aqueous, liquid state. C2H5, OH is again aqueous, which is the liquid state. So now ferric ion and SCN negative ion, again in their aqueous state, they give rise to FeSCN, two positive, which is also aqueous. So this shows that all of these are examples of homogeneous equilibria where the physical states of all the reactants and the products are the same. Having understood this, let us now understand how do we apply our knowledge of equilibrium constant and how, how can equilibrium constant be affected by uh, this aspect. So if we study equilibria, equilibrium constant in gaseous systems, that is where a homogeneous system where all the reactants and the products are gaseous in nature. So before we understand that, we know when we have done in states of matter that for an ideal gas, you have the ideal gas equation that is equal to PV is equal to NRT. That's the ideal gas equation. And what have we understood about the calculation of the equilibrium constant? The equilibrium constant is Kc, which is equal to the product of the concentrations of the products divided by the product of the concentrations of the reactants, all raised to their respective stoichiometric coefficients. This is So they are in terms of their concentrations, the molar concentrations, or in terms of their molarities. So let us see, can we find a relationship between that equilibrium constant and this ideal gas equation? We could say that pressure is equal to number of moles upon volume rt number of moles per liter what would it be it would be the molarity number of moles per liter is molarity so you could say that p is actually equal to crt this is a very important expression p is equal to crt where c stands for the concentration and if the concentration is in terms of moles per liter we could, moles per liter are represented by a box bracket. So we could say that P is equal to concentration of the gas into RT, right? Now in this equation, R is the gas constant, which is equal to 0 0.0831 bar liter per mole per Kelvin or mole inverse Kelvin inverse. So we know that R is gas constant and it's a constant value. So if the temperature was kept to be constant, then 
the value of pressure would directly depend on the concentration or we would say that if at constant temperature pressure becomes directly proportional to the concentration the molar concentration of the gas it becomes directly proportional to it right so now that we have understood this let us apply this knowledge to uh, an example you have an equation that is H2 gas combines with I2 gas to give you twice HI, formation of hydrogen iodide, right? What was Kc in this case? If you remember, Kc, how do you calculate it? The concentration of HI to the power of 2 upon the concentration of H2 into concentration of I2, the molar concentration in moles per liter. Right? And why do we raise it to the power of 2? Because the stoichiometric coefficient here is 2. In the case of gases, the partial pressure, since it is proportional to the concentration, we can write the equilibrium constant in terms of the partial pressures also. So, equilibrium constant in terms of pressure would be equal to the pressure of Hi to the power of 2 divided by the partial pressure of H2 into the partial pressure of I2. You can find out the equilibrium constant in terms of pressure also. Now what is the partial pressure of HI? PHI can also be written as, you know, P is CRT, so we can write it as in terms of this concentration. So PHI would be the concentration of HI, the molar concentration of HI into RT. Similarly, the partial pressure of H2 can also be written as the molar concentration of H2 into RT. And similarly, the partial pressure of I2 could be written as the concentration of I2 into RT. And if you do this, you could substitute all of these uh, pressure terms in this equation. So Kp would be equal to Kp then would be equal to Hi into Rt whole square or if I keep them separate I would say square of Hi and the square of Rt upon the concentration of H2 into Rt into the concentration of I2 into Rt right. So, if I separate the concentrations and bring RT outside, I would say that this would be H2 into, R, into I2 concentrations into RT square because there are two RTs for both of them. RT square and RT square gets cancelled. So, what do we get? We get HI upon H2 concentration of H2 into I2 is Kp. And what is this? What is this amount? Isn't it equal to Kc? Kc is also Hi square, sorry, Hi square upon H2 into I2, the concentrations of the reactants. So in this case, Kp is equal to Kc. So what do we notice? There is a relationship between equilibrium constant in terms of concentration and equilibrium constant in terms of pressure. And that may not all, you may not always get Kp is equal to Kc. Let us take another example. If we take this example of Haber's process now instead. And let's try and do this. Apply the same knowledge here. What would Kc be in this case? Kc would be equal to NH3 square upon N2, concentration of N2, into H2 to the power of 3. And what would Kp be? Kp would be equal to NH3. Now I'm writing Kp in terms of, uh, in this form. So it would be concentration of NH3 square into RT square upon N2 into RT into H2 cube into RT cube. Isn't it? because we are writing the partial pressures in terms of concentrations. So now you have two RTs 
in the numerator and four RTs in the denominator. So what are you left with? KP would become equal to uh, NH3 square upon, I'm, I'll bring the N to N2 into H2 cube and for the RT you get two RTs here and four RTs here. So it will be into RT to the power of minus two you could say, right? So in this case, what is KC equal to? K how would you relate KC and KP? So KP becomes equal to, KP becomes equal to KC into, sorry, C is a subscript. KP is actually KC into the RT to the power minus 2. That is how it is related. Or we could say RT minus 2 KC. That's the relationship between KP and KC for this equation. So what do we understand? That KP is in terms of pressure and the pressure in the case of homogeneous equilibria in the case of gases can be written in terms of concentration and therefore a relationship between KP and KC can be calculated. It does not always turn out to be the same. As we saw in this case, we got KP was equal to KC, but in, the case, in this case, KP was not equal to KC. So then, can we have a generalized expression where we wouldn't have to bother about uh, calculating it for each and every equation like this? So from this, we could calculate a generalized equation. Let us have an equation that you have a moles of A plus B moles of B giving you C moles of C and D moles of D. And there's an equilibrium between them. So let us calculate KC from this. KC would be equal to the concentration of C to the power C into D to the power D upon concentration of reactants that is A to the power A into B to the power B. And what would KP be then? KP now, KP would then be the concentration of C in terms of concentration we are writing. KP would be the concentration of C to the power C into RT to the power C into concentration of D to the power D into RT to the power D. Sorry, small d. divided by the concentration of the reactants A to the power A into RT to the power A into concentration of B to the power B into RT to the power B. If you separate the concentration terms and the RT part, what do we get? We get Kp would be equal to the concentration of C to the power C into D to the power D into RT to the power C into RT to the power D would be C plus D divided by A to the power A into B to the power B into RT to the power of again A plus B. Right? Now what is you get what you get in terms of RT now this remains this is KC so we write KP would be equal to KC into RT to the power of C plus D minus A plus B do you get this if you keep bring RT to the numerator and find this relationship C plus D minus A plus B look at the equation what is C plus D C plus D is the number of moles of the products total number of moles of the products. And what is A plus B? A plus B is the total number of moles of the reactants. In other words, what you get here is the difference in the number of moles in the chemical reaction. Right? The difference in the number of moles in the chemical reaction, which is represented as delta N, as we studied in thermodynamics and in previous chapters. So this would be, we'll write, the generalized expression would be Kp is equal to Kc 
into RT to the power of delta N. And this becomes the generalized equation, which would be applicable to all uh, equations. And you really don't have to carry out this entire calculation in this way. You just know that RT would be to the power of delta T. That is the difference in the number of moles of the reactants, total number of moles of reactants and products. And that's the relationship between KP and KC. With that, I'll finish this video. In the next video, we'll solve a few solved examples of the NCRT textbook exercise. If you found this one useful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.